Hey everybody, it's Dr. Levi, and welcome to your show, The Dr. Levi Show. Today is July 19th, 2017. Beautiful in Los Angeles, as per usual. A lot of stuff going on universally here, though. You know, we got wildfires here, a lot of craziness there. Hopefully that'll get contained. Um, I just want to say that I really enjoy being here with you today, and I hope you enjoy the show. Today is our Q&A you know, questions and answers. So we take questions from the gaming community globally, internationally. So question that you have about gaming, about fitness, about health, about overall well-being, today is a day that we'll discuss that. Now, before I get into that, I want to go over a few medical issues. You know, often we get questions that, you know, I'm an orthopedic surgeon, but of course, you know, I'm, I'm a doctor. So my, my background is in internal medicine and psychiatry and everything else. You know, the good thing about medicine is that as we're going through residency, as we're going through medical school, we take a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We just go into all these different fields of thought, which is great because medicine is so diverse. So, you know, we get a chance to train in internal medicine, infectious disease. And one of the questions that, that I had recently, and I want to talk about it, is about gastritis. Like, what is gastritis, and why do people develop it, and how can they avoid getting it? So let's talk about that. So gastritis is really just basically it's inflammation. It's inflammation of the gastric line, the mucosal tract of your intestines. That's what we're, we're looking at, of your of your. Your, you think about your intestines, think about your stomach lining, you know, think, of, think about that as gastritis. So if the lining of your stomach is inflamed, it's angry, doesn't feel good, well, that's gastritis. Now, let's talk about what are some of the causes of gastritis. Well, there are many. It can be caused by food allergy. It can be caused you know, which is an irritant for some people, like, like gluten, for example, or lactose. It can be caused by someone who has, like, H. pylori disorder or overgrowth. Because H. pylori is normal for the gut to have, but if you have an overgrowth of that, then you can have problems. And the problems can be the following. Before I go to the problems, let's talk about some other causes of, uh, of gastritis. So it can be caused by food, as I talked about. It can be caused by excess alcohol use. Someone who has diabetes or kidney disorder, they may have this. Um, I, and I made a, a real big list also because I, there were so many things here. So bacteria, viruses, excessive vomiting. For example, someone who has uh, bulimia or anorexia who does a lot of uh, vomiting possibly, that can cause it. From stress, of course. Different forms of medication can cause this. From medication interactions, you're taking medicines that are, are having a, a contraindication and it may cause this type of problem also. So the, the issue here is the following. If you have this type of, of uh, problem going on with your stomach lining, then you can have bloating, you can have black tarry stools, you can have bleeding in your stool, you can have a feeling of fullness constantly, uh, just not feeling good, lack of energy. So the bottom line is this. Once you have this plethora of symptoms, then it's so important that you talk to your doctor, talk to him or her to see if they want to go further with other tests like endoscopies, biopsies, colonoscopies. There's so many different things that we can do to find out what's the cause of this, even blood tests to see if there's a certain form of a bacteria that's in your blood that may be causing this problem. The bottom line is this. We, know we treat gastritis depending on what the root cause is. So if the root cause, for example, is someone who has an allergy to lactose or to gluten, well, we take that out the diet. If the root cause is extreme stress, well, we talk to that person about getting into a stress management program like, like meditation or yoga or Pilates, or some really what I call multi-layered program to minimize stress in their lives and also to give them tools to deal with stress. It's really all about how do you, how do you deal with stress? You know, we all have stress, of course. It's a part of the, the, the human experience. But the goal is to not be overcome by stress. Uh, to not feel like you're in this closed box where you cannot escape. So with that said, the way we treat it is dependent upon the root cause of the gastritis. So I, I wanted to discuss that today because when you have questions that I, that I can, can just expound on a little bit, I want to give you some insights about it. But also to let you know that when it comes to gastritis, make sure that your doctor, he or she, refers you to a gastroenterologist, a specialist in that field. 
because, you know, for myself, I'm a bone doctor, so I take care of people who have fractures of their bones in their, in their hands, their wrists, their elbows, their shoulders. However, you know, I, I would not take care of someone who has, um, you know, severe medical issues because it's not my, my area of expertise. Can I do some management of, of their diabetes, their hypertension? Well, of course. But I'm talking about globally when someone has uh, multiple medical issues, then you have to have a multi-team approach to really help them to get better because no doctor is self-sustaining. No matter what he or she may think, we all need to work together as a medical community to get people well and get them better, of course. Now, I want to get to our questions. We have a lot of them. And before I start, I want to talk about one question I got yesterday from Mark, who plays for a professional gaming team. Um, and his question was about using the micro mouse, and that he was having pain in his hand, his mousing hand, specifically in this area. This is the thenar area. So there's the thenar area near the thumb and the hypothenar area near the small finger or the fifth spit finger. We really don't call it the fifth. It's really the small finger and, of course, this is the thumb. So, um, so I want to give you my thoughts. Our first question is going to be for Mark as well as many other games you've asked me about, about using a micro mouse. What is a micro mouse? It's just a mouse that's, that's fairly small. Now, Mark's question was similar to several others that I've gotten, with, which is the following. Is it better to use a smaller mouse or a larger mouse? The bottom line is this. You use the mouse that works best for your game, that gives you greater speed, that gives you less pain, and gives you better function when you're in a game. So no matter which arena you're in, the mouse issues are the following. Number one, to make sure that you adjust the sensitivity of the mouse. Because think about it. If the sensitivity of the mouse is set really, really high and you're using a micro mouse, then think about the amount of control you have to have over that. Because if you just touch that a little bit, that cursor is going to fly. So in general, I'll tell you this. I am not an avid fan of the micro mouse with the caveat being this. If it works for you, you don't have hand, finger, wrist, or elbow, or shoulder pain, then so be it. Fantastic. Keep using it if it works for you. However, if you're having discomfort in your hand, wrist, or elbow, or shoulder, which can be attributed to use of a micro mouse, then don't use it. Get a larger mouse. Then if you get a larger mouse, again, the goal here is you really have to look at what is the sensitivity that you have on it. Because sensitivity is everything. So, of course, the higher the sensitivity, the less you have to move the mouse. The lower the sensitivity, the more strength or force that you have to use to push against the mouse so that you can get the cursor where you want it. Now, the deal is this. Most professional gamers, at least the ones that I, under my care, they want everything on pretty high sensitivity. They just want to touch it, boom, get it to move really quickly. And of course, that depends on the game also. Um, in general, again, I want to I reiterate, use the mouse that works for your hand. Now, the next thing I want to do, I want to show you some specific exercises and some pressure massage points that you can connect with if you're having discomfort. So take a look. So here's your hand. If you're having pain in this area, the thenar area of your hand from using a micro mouse, most likely your clutch or hold on the, on the micro mouse is too hard and too intense. And also, you're most likely flexing your wrist too much to control the mouse. So with that said, I want to show you an exercise that I think will help you and some pressure massage points. So number one, Use your other thumb just to massage this area. And I tell you, when you first do these, this will hurt. This, this is even for myself. And I don't game as much as I used to because, because I have to operate, and I find it will affect me when I'm operating, of course. But, of course, I still game. Um, so here, you want to press against this area. Now, when you're pressing in this, again, the thenar area of your hand, so use the pad of your other thumb and just press down. And press down hard enough where it makes your thumb flex by itself, all right? So start from the base of your thumb here at the MCP metacarpophalangeal joint 
at that crease there and just press down. Just press down. And I would say, do this for a set of 10 to 20 times. Then you want to move your thumb down a half an inch or so. The same thing. Press down. Just like that. And again, you're going to press down so hard that it actually flexes your thumb. Just like that. Then go down to the bottom half again. 10 to 20 times. Just like that. Then you want to take your fingers and just push down here. Now, when you're pushing down, you're rolling from... Kaplan's, well, we have a, something we call Kaplan's line of the hand, but let's not get into that. You're going to just literally roll from this area of the thumb and down. Just press, press, press. Then up, down, down. Just like this. You're going to really feel a difference. Now I want to also show you a stretch that you can do that will also help you. And again, the pressing motion, all three or four fingers. You can use, I prefer just use my ring finger my middle finger and my small finger to just to press down. If you want, you can engage the index finger also here, just like this. I, I, for me, I think the index finger gets in the way with this movement. You just press down like that. So I call this clawing of the hand, all right? So again, just like that. And again, I would do that for about a minute to 30 seconds, once or twice a day. It's, it's, or if you can, you, know, you take that five minute break every hour after gaming, well, that's the time you can do this exercise. Again, clawing of the hand. So again, press, 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 30 seconds or so. I gave you the other one. You're pressing down flex so hard that you, you flex the thumb. And then the second part, and then the third part, just like this. Then the next thing that you can do that will help you are the following. The piano movement of the hand. So, you know, like p playing piano, C, D, E, F, G. So again, just go across the C finger, which is the thumb. Then try to press this against your small finger. Then press your thumb against your ring finger, just like that. Thumb against the, actually, so let's do this. So against the small finger, against the ring finger, against the middle finger, against the index finger. So 10, 10, 10, 10, each of those. All right. Now, when you finish that, then I recommend that you do this. Extend your hand and bring all your fingers back. Now, as you bring your fingers back this way, I want you to bring your thumb down. Okay? So, fingers back, thumb down. And keep the elbow straight. So, once again, let's do it. Fingers back, elbow extended, press the thumb out. Just like that. So it's almost like you're making an L sign reverse with both hands. And you press back. And you hold. And hold that for 30 seconds. You'll feel it in your elbow and your forearm as well as your fingers and your hand. So that's my take about the micro mouse. I'll do a video eventually about that too. We'll talk about that more. Um, but I'm not an I'm not overly big fan of it. But I want to reiterate, if it works for you, it works for me. But be careful. If you have discomfort, then make those changes. All right? Now, let's get into our questions because we have a lot of them from all over the world, and I want to start. So the first uh, is from, these are the Facebook questions. So, hi, I'm Angela from the United Kingdom, Coventry, West Midlands. I've been following you on YouTube as I got arthritis in my left thumb. Can I say thank you? I can hold my cup and phone. I think you're amazing. I, I don't like the injections. Well, thank you, Angela. Um, I'm glad the exercises are helping you. Most importantly with arthritis is the following. One, to stay active, maintain a healthy, clean diet, stay well hydrated, of course, and do the exercise that we have on the YouTube channel. You no, know, you know, I'm really fortunate that my team and I have really done our best to really give you the best of, of my medical knowledge and to really give you exercises and stretches that are what I call evergreen. You can use them today or use them five years from now. They'll still be effective. They'll still help you. And I, I hope, I'm glad to hear that it's helping you, Angela. So if I get to uh, the UK, Coventry, West Midlands, hopefully we'll get a chance to share a cup of joe together, you know. Uh, but I'm glad that, you're feeling, glad that you're feeling better. That's fantastic. All right. The next question is, hello, Doc. We are supporting you from France. You know, moi, j'adore la France. Uh, tu sais, j'étais là pour uh, à peu près deux ans. Hein? J'étais à Angers. Angers, c'est pas très loin de Paris. C'est deux, uh, 
15 minutes par le train de, de Paris. Hein, et j'adore la France. Moi, j'étais à la Université catholique de l'Ouest à Angers. C'était fantastique. Hein. Euh, et c'était assez difficile aussi. Mais j'adore la France. J'adore les, les gens, la gastronomie, la culture. Mais pas la circulation. Hein. Ça, j'aime pas du tout. Hein. Um, but I love France. So, you know, you know, the great thing about France is uh, the, the people, the culture, it's so rich, so beautiful. Uh, you know, I, I was just saying in, in France, I lived in a, a, a city called Angers, or Angers, A-N-G-E-R-S, and it's really just an amazing, beautiful city with, with great ch uh, an incredible chateau, um, great patisseries, just, just I, 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 I could talk about France all day. And all night. I, I, I love France. Um, so, okay, let's get to your question, though. So, hello, Doc. We're supporting you from France here, and I wanted to know if you had some kind of tips to not get mad when playing. When I do, I usually hit my desk, and then I need to do exercises for my wrist. Thank you, and keep the good work on your YouTube channel. Merci. Well, thank you very much. Merci bien, no? Mais écoute, moi, je pense cela. Okay, well, excuse me. So, I think this. So, the following. Right before you're getting very angry or peeled, you know, when you're playing, right before you're going to slam your hand or your wrist, you have to really, as you're about to slam down, I want you to think, wait, 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 stop. Take a breath. Step away from your gaming arena, i.e. your desk. Step away from your desk. Step away from your computer. Walk away for two minutes and just take a breath. Just, just that alone. Right when you feel so P.O. that you want to hurt something or hurt somebody or, or break up your equipment, you just stop and remind yourself, wait, this is a game. Wait, if I break up my computer and my keyboard and my mouse, I will not be able to play for a while until I can get this paid for and get it back again. So take a break. You take, you again, the first thing, get away from the area. You step away. Right when you feel your anger is about to explode, and we all have it at times, myself included. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I get it. I get it. None of us want to see defeat pop up on the screen. I get it. However, it's a game that we all love, no matter what it is, from Overwatch to League of Legends uh, to a single-shooter game or first-person shooter game. I, I, I get it. However, Bring yourself out of it for a second and not harm yourself or break up equipment. Just don't. So the first tip I have, get up, step away, breathe, come back, sit down, and then go forward. But don't let the anger of losing a game affect your bottom line and, and also your ability to be able to play later. It'll destroy your equipment, then you're down for how long? How stressful would that be? You think you're angry now, waiting until you can't play for like a week or two because you have to wait for something to come in. But everyone, you know, I want to tell you something really funny. Uh, recently, I, I was talking to a gamer, uh, and I was telling him about uh, he has some anger management uh, issues that we're going over. And uh, he, he told me, he said, well, you know, I just sometimes, Dr. Levi, he said, I just break uh, stuff up. He didn't say it like that. He used some other fi fiery flowery language and uh, I said well you know I want you to really do these things so we talked about this and he said well the good thing is that when I break up things he said that's why I just love Amazon Prime <laughs> and, and I told him I said that's not an excuse because you can order it and you can get it the next day or two that's not an excuse to break up stuff but uh, so he's doing better now though so I, we just spoke uh, a few days ago so that's a good thing so again I want to remind you just step away take a breath and then come back and get reoriented and just push through. All right? So, and again, j'adore la France. Uh, C'est impeccable comme pays. Et uh, j'espère que je peux venir cette année. J'espère. Hein? J'espère que oui. Hein? Okay, next question. Uh, it seems that I have acute calcium deposits next to my pisiform bone in my left wrist. I'm currently using a splint. And I'm wondering how long it could take to get better. And if I can use my left hand for gaming purposes while in the splint. Additionally, I was wondering which stretches, exercises, or habits I could be doing in order to prevent this from happening again. 
P.S. The game that caused this is Osu. All right, so let's go over a few things. You know, I, I like that game Osu too. Osu is a, a real rhythm-based game, very very difficult also. Um, you know, speaking of that, we had a we had a, we did a show with uh, one of the 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 Osu professionals, Happy Stick. Really really nice guy. Really uh, just a uh, a good person. He did one of our shows, and uh, we did a video actually for Osu for the OSU community. We've done like two of those that are up. You can get those two to show you specific exercises for the OSU community. All right. Now, let's talk about your calcium deposits. Number one, how do you know they're calcium deposits? Did you have an x-ray that was taken? Did a doctor, did she or he tell you that you had calcium deposits? And then the next question I would have to ask you is, have you had previous trauma to your wrist that caused that? Um, because... That, that's the issue of why do you have the calcium deposits near your, your pisiform bone. All right. Now, the bottom line is if you have them, I suggest the following. And, again, I want to remind everyone, all my suggestions are suggestions for you. However, because I'm your doctor virtually, it's important that all of you listening to me today, you have to be seen by your local health care practitioner. They have to see. They have to put their hands on you and do the physical exam and, and get your full, complete history, your family history, to find out what's going on. So I can share my thoughts with you, but you still must be seen and evaluated by your local health care practitioners. All right? I have to give you that disclaimer because it's true. If you're in L.A., of course, come by my office and I'll, I'll see you, of course. I'll take care of you. That's, that's my job. That's what I do in medicine. Okay, so... With that said, if you have, so let's talk about the pisiform bone. So the pisiform bone is this area here. So if you're having pain in that area, you may be doing, and if, and if you do have calcium deposits, I still would have to know how do you know there are calcium deposits there. Um, did you have a CT scan, an MRI, or a regular x-ray that showed that? So, But if you say you do, I'm going to take your word for that, that that was diagnosed by someone. So I recommend the following. Number one. You can massage this area here. Number two, you can ask your doctors about the possibility of the following. When there's calcium deposits, for example, in the shoulder, sometimes we can give an injection of a steroid there to help dissolve the, the calcium deposits. Secondly, if you're having discomfort, you can talk to your doctor, see if he or she thinks that that might help you, giving you a small injection of a steroid to see if that can help to break that up. The other thing is possible, something called electroshock wave therapy. Shock wave is really like uh, ultrasonographic waves, basically, that will pulse to break up the, the calcium deposits there. Ask them, do they think that's a viable possibility? You know, we do that for someone who has, for example, kidney stones, you know, to break up the stones. We do it sometimes for someone who has calcific tendonitis of the, of the elbow or of the shoulder. So these are things that are, are viable possibilities that you have to ask your doctor if he or she has even access to that or if they can refer you to someone else who may be able to do that procedure, all right? Now, the stretches I would recommend for you would be the following. Again, pisiform bone, and pisiform, I want to spell that for everyone who's listening, P-I-S-I-F-O-R-M. Again, P-I-S-I-F-O-R-F-O-R-M, pisiform. So, again, you may want to just rub the area here back and forth, all right? So, rotating circular, back, then stretching your hand back like this, then doing the same type of massage in this area. So again, with the hand in neutral position, and then with the hand extended. Now, it's always better, I feel, when you're doing a stretch like that, to keep the elbow extended also, all right, to rub against this area. All right, so I think that will help you. The other thing is to look at your pad. You may need to have some type of gel pad to let that area of your hand rest until the inflammation goes down. Because if you have tendonitis in this area now, that, uh, that can also be problematic. Tendonitis, you know, uh, superimposed on 
having calcific tendonitis near the pisiform. But again, my question to you is the following. Are you sure it's calcium? And who made that diagnosis? You know, that, that's what I like to know from you. And, and let me know. Please get back to me. I want to know. And let me know if these exercises help you. All right? The next question is the following. These are a, a slightly long, but I, I want to do my best to answer all of them because, you know, when you, when you reach out to me, I want to reach back to you so we can all be helpful to each other. All right. Next question is, I was wanting to ask you a question regarding pain in my hands while I use a computer, mouse, and keyboard. I do a lot of PC strategy games. I watch your videos on exercises for gamers, and the exercise you explained have helped a lot with the pain in my wrist, although it never has gone away completely. But I still get pain in my fingers and some in my elbow, which I think is connected to that in my hand. Is there any way to help that? Also, I wanted to ask if it's possible to overdo these exercises because sometimes my hand feels sore after doing them. And thanks for the advice you've already, you've already given in your videos. It's been helping. Well, glad to know that the videos are helping. So let's talk about this pretty, I want to I drill deep on this question. So if you're having pain in your wrist and you're also having discomfort that you feel in your elbow, it's, it's very possible. Why? Because the extensor tendons, the I'll give you two tendons, the extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis, these tendons really extend from this area to your index finger. So, yes, if you're having inflammation in your wrist and in your elbow, you can. Because the inflammation at your elbow, which may cause lateral epicondylitis, that inflammation can extend down the, the muscle bellies also. Now, you may also have the tendonitis of your wrist, and if the wrist is inflamed, it can also do what I call a double hit, which I've seen in gamers who have inflammation in the elbow, which causes the tennis elbow, as well as inflammation in their wrist. Now, the double hit is this. The two areas are inflamed, but not only simply inflamed, but the inflammation doesn't just sit in one space. That's the issue here the inflammation sort of extravasates in this whole area, whereby often they will get not only wrist pain, but they will get pain in the first extensor dorsal compartment, which, which houses the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis, those two tendons, as well as they'll have pain along the, the third, excuse me, the second and third compartments, which house the extensor pollicis longus, as, as well as the, the second compartment, ECRB and ECRL. Now, th this whole area can become very inflamed. So, again, if you feel like that pain is extravasating from the elbow to the wrist, it's possible. So, again, do the nursery exercise. We talk about them almost every show. So, you're flexing down and you hold with the elbow extended for 30 seconds. Then you bring your hand up in the extended position and you bring your fingers and your hand back, holding back the palm also. I'll do it from the side here so you can see. And you hold that for 30 seconds. And do, you know, three to four sets of that. Now, the other question that you had, which is a great question that I really appreciate is, can I overdo the exercises? Well, absolutely. You know how you can overdo them? If you're not switching them up. If you look at the catalog of exercise and videos that I have, it's so imperative and so important that you rotate the exercises. It's like going to the gym. If you go to the gym and do the same exercises, your body doesn't get any great benefit. But if you go to the gym and do different exercise programs every seven to eight days and you shock your body, the body appreciates that. The body thrives off of exercise diversity and CrossFit type training, or we call high intensity interval type training. So this is the deal. Take, look at the exercise that you're doing and do some of the same exercises every other day or do a set of the same exercise for three days then switch it up and do another set for three days and switch that up and rotate them around for maybe eight or nine weeks until finally you're back at the first exercise that you started the key is to pick three or four core exercises and change them up every week or every few days again as you know if you do the same things you get the same results so you want to do something different so you can get not only the same result, but a better result. You know, 
The goal in the community that I serve, which is a gaming community, of course, is as well as the fitness community, is to remind you that diversity is critical for the body to thrive. I, I think it helps your mind also because for me, if I go to the gym and do the same thing every day, I'll be bored out of my mind, literally. I have to change it up. I have to go and take a, a, a spin class versus, a, you know, wh- which one of my first loves, of course, CrossFit, taking a CrossFit class, you know, or taking a functional fitness class, uh, or taking a gymnastics class, or taking a stunt class, or a mixed martial arts class, or my great trainer, Danny Garcia, you know, taking a boxing class with him, you know, he's just phenomenal, or my 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 gymnastics coach, you know, Coach Yvonne Ivanov, working out with him. You know, so the goal is really to diversity. So diversity of your exercises and to make sure that you rotate them. Now, I want to talk about one other thing that you asked about is the the mouse and keyboard use. Now, so have to, you have to look at your mouse. Maybe you need a larger mouse. Maybe the keyboard is not ergonomically balanced. Maybe you're playing with the keyboard too close to your body. There's a video that we have up that shows the proper placement of the keyboard as well as the mouse for ergonomic evaluation and ergonomic balance that you can do at home to really help you. You know, wherever your arena or stage is, and most likely it's right at your desk or right at your table, then you want to be as ergonomically balanced as possible to avoid injury, or at least to mitigate any pain that you may have from any impending injury. But of course, the major goal that I have for all of you, and I want you to hear this, my major goal is to avoid injury so that you can play and play well, and also to play without any pain. You know, you know, if we're playing games that we love and we're having pain, then the love is not going to be there as intensely. So I want you to be able to play, to win, to be functional, to be fit. Now, the other thing I want to add to is, this is a side note for the gaming community. Exercise has to be a part of your regular daily routine. It has to be. You have to exercise. You have to really mitigate and not smoke. You have to be aware of how much alcohol you're drinking. And you have to go to sleep properly. And I know these things are difficult because, it will, you know, especially if you're gaming 12 to 16 hours a day, I understand. I get it. But I still can't give you a pass. I cannot say it's okay. You have to exercise. The other big thing that I have, you know, with games or gamers that I take care of and I remind them is, is meditation. Meditation is critical. It's critical to really take time every day to sit peacefully for 5 to 15 minutes once or twice a day to simply relax, to relax, to be in a state of gratitude, to be in a state of just thoughtlessness where you're just sitting, listening to your breath, listening to your heartbeat, but sitting in true peace so you can be ready when you do play that your creativity is ready to explode and you have to get rest because if you're well rested, you can play even better. Because don't forget, your first instrument, as I say on the show so often, just like myself in medicine, my first instrument is my brain. My second instrument is my body. But the brain, that's the number one thing that controls it all. So you have to have that rested, and it has to be healthy. You have to give it great nutrition, all right? So I hope that helps you, those exercises. Uh, Let me know how you're progressing. And maybe consider changing your mouse and your keyboard, especially if you're all PC game based. You have to do that, I think. All right. Next question. Hi, Doc. I apologize. I apologize terribly for bothering you again, but your last advice worked brilliantly. So I thought of taking your advice again. A couple of days ago after working out, my left knee started hurting and the following day the pain grew throughout my leg. The throbbing pain still exists after three to four days. It refuses to die down. What should I do? Thank you. So first I recommend the following. If you have a knee pain, because knee pain is what what I often call in medicine a very complex pain. And it's one of those things that unless I'm looking at you, let's say we're doing like FaceTime together or Skype, then I can really see and ask you to, to touch certain areas to see if that's painful. I could see if there's any swelling there. 
and then you could tell me if there's any clicking if I ask you to to for example extend or flex your knee so with knee pain because I can't examine you I recommend the following number one go please go and be seen by your local healthcare doctor two I would not do any running or jumping at this time, um, period. Number three, knee pain can be very odd because it can be from recent and sometimes even old trauma. It can be from meniscal tears. It can be from patella tendonitis, quadriceps tendonitis, an ACL injury, an MCL injury, a PCL injury. You know, all these different things. The, the knee is so complex. I have such great respect for knee surgeons because uh, so many things can go wrong with the knee. It can be age-dependent. It can be arthritis, of course. Uh, th there's so many things with the knee. It can be synovitis. It can be pigmented villonodular uh, issues. There's so much that can happen with that. Uh, so I recommend the following. Definitely go to be seen by your doctor. And if you want, you can send me a video of your knee so I can look at that. Um, or we could FaceTime or something. I could tell you more. But the, no matter what I'm saying, I want to I want to reiterate: you have to be seen by your doctor. Knee pain is is tricky and very 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 complex. Because I also want to say this: sometimes you have knee pain that's actually referred pain from the hip, where the knee is actually fine, but the pain could be coming from a hip issue. You know, so so yes, yeah, so you have to be seen by your doctor for that. All right, and. Uh, you know, in the meantime, if you're not allergic to any anti-inflammatory, you can ask him or her about putting you on one of those for a very short burst period of time. Make sure that you're eating well, still exercising lightly. But I would not do any running, jumping, uh, box jumps, nothing like that right now until whatever the issue is, one, is confirmed what you have. Because the doctor that you see for knee pain, the first thing he or she may do is the following. After taking your history, then he or she may say, well, now let's get an x-ray. If the x-ray looks funny or odd, then he or she may say, well, let's get an MRI of your knee. So the bottom line is this. You have to be seen by someone for that. Knee pain, uh, like hand pain, is very, very complex. But hand pain, I have a grip on that, thank God. But knee pain, I want you to be seen by someone. All right? But stop what you're doing and rest it. You can ice it also the first acute days. You know, like three to four days, you can ice it also. But again, really avoid doing any type of lifting, pushing, uh, bending. Uh, and if you pick up anything, of course, bend your knees before you lift anything. Stuff like that. Just the basics of, of being safe for your knees as well as being safe for your back. That's the other issue, you know. Okay, so next question is, I have this problem on my wrist when I pinch and put some pressure. I feel something like electric. I also feel numbness on my arms sometimes. I work as a delivery and I use a motorcycle and do a lot of gaming on my spare time. I just want to ask how to prevent this to further more serious injury. And do I need to buy some stuffs to help me with my problem? Well, I would recommend the following. If you're having electric sharp pains in your hand, and I want to go over this again, if it's in your thumb, index finger, middle finger, and half of, this is the radial portion, the radial side of your ring finger, decreased dexterity in your hands, lack of grip strength, well, you may have a form of, you may have carpal tunnel. Now, if you're having pain that radiates from your neck into your arm, down your arm and forearm into your hand, especially if, if you say it's radiating to your thumb, index finger, middle finger, and ring finger, then it's possible you may have some form of nerve injury to your neck, whereby the nerve that comes through the foramen may be impinged upon. That could be from everything from arthritis in your neck, you know, to having a spur there, to some type of foraminal stenosis. There's so many things that can cause a, that form of, of, of cervical radiculopathy. So now, if you're having that, the first thing I'd recommend is that you minimize any type of hyperextension of your wrist, all right? Because that puts a lot of stress on the median nerve, and the median nerve is the carpal tunnel nerve. So I want to go over this. So this is the area where the median nerve lives. 
So the layers of the carpal tunnel are the following. You have skin, some subcutaneous fat, you have the palmar aponeurosis, you have some blood vessels there, and then you have the TCL, the transverse carpal ligament. Then when you cut that, you have the median nerve there with the nine flexor tendons. So the bottom line is this. If you're having that type of discomfort, then go, go to be seen by your doctor. He or she may say, well, let's get an EMG, a nerve conduction study, to help to see if there is a problem coming from your neck or if, it, or if it's simply localized to your wrist. Um, the other thing that I recommend is, yes, you can buy a splint. There's something called a cock-up splint. And a cock-up splint will have your wrist like this. Well, you don't want your wrist, when you buy it, it's going to be like that. What you want to do is bend. There's going to be a metal stay inside of it. You want to bend it down so that your hand is in a position of function. So, you want, so again, when you get the splint, when you buy it at like a drugstore, it's going to be like you're going to have your hand up like that. Bend it inside so that your, your wrist is in a neutral position and you wear that splint. You only want to wear it for a short burst period of time. I'd say maybe a week, maybe a week and a half. And definitely I would sleep with it. Why? Because when we sleep, we often sleep in a fetal position like this. This is the worst position for carpal tunnel because if you're in this position for several hours at night, that nerve, again, the median nerve, is being pressed upon a long period of time. So that's another thing that may cause this type of problem. So, and other issues, of course, with carpal tunnel are the following. You know, we see it more often in diabetics, for example. We see it in smokers. Um, you know, women over 40, men over 40 also, but anyone can get it. I've taken care of kids and children who have been as young as 16 and 17 with carpal tunnel from gaming. So I, I've, seen a, I've seen a lot, yeah. So I recommend that get the splint, you know, do the exercises more, maybe cut back half of your gaming right now. So let's say you're gaming, let's say 16 hours a day, then maybe cut it down to seven to eight, all right? Um, and make sure instead of doing maybe five minutes of stretching, you might want to do the gliding exercise. These are the gliding exercises again. These are the carpal tunnel preventive exercise that we're hoping to do anyway, like this, back, and then back around. Then you want to close your fists gently, not tight, just gently, and do them with your, your fist tightly, sh um, not tightly, but loosely closed for 10 that way and 10 the other way. All right, so again, so let's review. For the carpal tunnel issues that you've just expressed to me, I recommend, again, the splint, some rest, doing the exercises after game instead of five minutes every hour, maybe 10 minutes, and making sure that your desk is ergonomically balanced and that the mouse fits your hand properly. But do the gliding exercise. It will help you tremendously. All right? And let me know how you're progressing. And don't forget, everyone, you know, when you, when you reach out to me, I want to know the following. Where, you, where are you reaching out from? Which country? Which nation? Which continent? Where are you from? I want to know that. I'm curious about that. Then secondly, uh, I want you to always follow up. I want to know the, the advice that I share with you. Or did any video that you look at help you? Because if it helped you, the next time someone asks, we can maybe set, make sure that it, it helps them. All right? Now, next question. I want to get to everyone's question here. Uh, can you do a video on uh, CSGO Pro or maybe with the person of the community? Okay, I will do that. So I put this out to the community. If there's a CSGO player who would like to do a video with myself and my team, contact me and we'll get you on We'll get you scheduled, and we'll do a video for CSGO. I don't mind. I'd like to do that. We did it for OSU, which is great. You know, if you're a professional-style player or if you're playing for a team, it'll be fantastic. And if not, if you're a community player who's highly ranked, great, come on in. We'd like to help. Sure. So, yes, if someone reaches out to us, I'll gladly do that. Now, next questions. I want to try to get through all of these guys. Hey, Dr. Levi, can you make an exercise video for gamers like Osu Mania, Step Mania, LR2, and O2 Jam? On on this games, we we have a very high, uh, uh, very high uh, notes per second. In my case, I developed tendonitis playing this game, and your videos make me create a habit to exercise after all play. Though, thank you very much, and cheers from Brazil. 
Got have to get to Brazil. I have to get to that country. So yeah, the, the key is this: when you're playing a game like like OSU or any other game that has a you know a very high uh, NP uh, NPS, you know, a notes per second, uh, it's so important that you take the breaks. You have to take the breaks and make sure that you know if you're using a stylus that you're not gripping it very tightly because then you can develop what I call the OSU barnacle on your finger. So there's a lot to think about there. But do the stretches. Um, and I have the stretches specifically for Osu. Those can be applied to all of the the, uh, the rhythmic games, without a doubt, without a doubt. Uh, next question is, uh, Dr. Levi, I play for four hours a day, Osu. Since I eat fruits and vegetables, it seems to help a lot as well. I also seem to warm my hands up before I start playing Osu. You know what? You're doing all the right stuff. Congratulations. Absolutely. You know, the warm-up can be just soaking your hands in warm water right before you play. You know, it can be... You know, keeping your hands together, you know, and and rubbing them really well like this. You know, there's a hand warmer that I'm going to be developing that's going to be very helpful, I think, too, because I think the hand warmers, the way they're designed now, uh, need a lot of help, actually. So I'm working on that project, too, as well as some other projects to help bring to the market to really help the gaming community. Um, the next question is, I developed gamer's thumb from holding my OSU pen the wrong way. Luckily, I came across your videos at that exact time. A new grip and stretches from your channel helped me a lot. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You know, I really embrace the OSU community. I embrace the game and esports community, of course. And I, I want to remind you that it's so very, very important that, again, for OSU to, to be aware of how tightly you're gripping the stylus, to make sure that when you're playing that you take your breaks, and then the other thing I have to share, I have to push this, I have the videos now for OSU specifically. So when someone says they're playing OSU, you know, I have to say, hey, the videos are there for you to really help you. I did them with Happy Stick, one of the OSU pros who's right here in Southern Cali. So everything is there for you. The goal is really the following. Use the videos, you know, tell your friends about them. And I just want to thank you all for being so loyal because I'm loyal to you also. And I want to remind you, of course, to subscribe, like, and be a part of our Facebook community, our Instagram community, our Snapchat community, YouTube community, Twitter community. And, of course, to remind you, every first Saturday of the month, of the month, Twitch TV, you know, we do that, that stream, which is really fantastic. And I really love interacting with all the gamers from all over the world for that because then we really have a chance to, to really talk shop about a lot of stuff. So... And I hope you guys are, 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 are a part of my Twitch community, too. You know, please subscribe and uh, just be a part of the community that from a doctor who, who wants to give his all to you to help you. But more importantly, want, I want to keep you healthy. I want to keep you fit. And I want to have you, give you the ability to play for a long, sustained time without any issues. That's my goal. All right. So I hope this was helpful today. I really appreciate you all. This is Dr. Levi. I look forward to joining you next week. And please subscribe, like, and follow us on all our social media platforms. This is Dr. Levi. Take care. Have an amazing week. I will. I got two words for you. Game on. <laughs>